Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is R.J. Gross. R.J. is an upland bird biologist with Game and Fish. We're going to talk about pheasants. R.J., you and your crews are just completing your crowing count surveys. Um, first question, I guess, what is a crowing count? Mm-hmm. Yep, uh, it's a survey that we use. Uh, it's basically an index of the adult roosters population. See how they're doing uh, every spring coming out of the winter. Um, we have right around 100 of them every year that our crews go out and do 20-mile uh, long segments. Uh, basically, every two miles, our crew will stop the vehicle, get out, walk away from the vehicle a little bit, listen for two minutes, and record the number of crows that they heard. Um, we do that same routes year to year so that we can compare uh, see how the population is doing. You mentioned now that this is an adult bird survey. Correct, yep. We're only looking at the adult roosters um, coming out of the winter. Well, now, so if it's adults, it doesn't necessarily give you a good indication of what bird numbers are going to be like this fall. I mean, there are, of course, a lot of broods that are uh, on the ground now. Mm -hmm. How do you find out that information? Yep, uh, that we look at, that'll be our late summer roadside counts. Uh, we start those usually the end of July, go through month of August. Um, there we're actually looking at all the birds that you see, uh, all upland birds, you know, roosters, hens, broods, things like that. We run the same routes as crowing counts. Um, our, per, per, our cooperators, they'll go do the, do the route, um, drive real slow. Every time they see, the bird, see a bird, they'll get out, try and flush it up, clap their hands, stomp their feet. Um, then we'll classify, you know, look at the roosters, the broods, classify the age size of the broods, um, brood size, things like that. You mentioned the different transects that you use, and there's mm -hmm. like a hundred of them across mm -hmm. the state. This, I guess, gives you a better handle of the geographic zones all across North Dakota. Yep, exactly. Uh, we have the states broken up into four census uh, units. Basically, we have the northwest is number one, number two is the northeast, number three is the southwest, and number four is the southeast. A few questions that we hear on the street, game and fish people always field a lot of questions. Has our dry spring and summer so far had an effect on bird numbers? Mm -hmm. It's a little early to tell, like we talked about the brood survey, that's when we'll get the big, you know, sure. big picture of coming into the fall. Um, it's definitely not setting up to do very well. Um, you know, the bigger thing that worried me, I guess, was the hen condition coming out of the winter. You know, like you know, we had really bad, mm -hmm. snowy, cold December and January. Um, I actually got my hand on some birds late January. They were very skinny, kind of getting to the point of emaciation. Um, but then we had that nice reprieve in February. The hillsides kind of started opening up. Birds found some food, um, made it through. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how well the hen body condition will be in order to, do it, to have a successful clutch of eggs. Sure. Um, you know, as I've been traveling out there, we've been seeing, you know, it's been very, very dry. Um, you know, most of the state is in a severe drought condition. A lot of the brood rearing habitat isn't as tall, as thick as you'd want it to be. And then also with the dry weather comes no insects, what the chicks really need those first two weeks of their life. Uh, you know, peak hatch was last week coming into this week. If the, the bugs just aren't there without the moisture, the chick survival will be really low. Uh, habitat conditions obviously are not going to be very good either with the dry conditions of course farmers and ranchers are are haying right. places that they haven't hayed before right S loss of CRP is going to yep. have a uh, an effect on them yep absolutely yeah the y we might be having emergency hang and you know while that'll be past the peak hatch it's still you know kind of worrisome that you know if a lot of the, if a lot of the habitat is hayed um, you know that'll be very tough on the chicks survival uh, then, you know, with CRP, you know, in our peak, we had over 3 million acres. Now I think we're down to somewhere around 1 million. Um, and as we've seen, CRP go down, so has pheasant numbers, pheasant, pheasant harvest as well. Well, big picture, I guess, uh, what can pheasant hunters expect to see? Mm -hmm. Just speculating on your mm -hmm. part uh, this yeah. year. Yeah, I mean, even though, you know, crowing counts were down to 15% statewide, that's not as bad as we thought it would be. You know, mm -hmm. it could have been a lot worse with the start of the winter that we had. Um, after all, you have to remember it's North Dakota. We're always going to have pheasants to, to hunt. It just might be, you know, take you a little bit longer, <laughs> a couple extra walks. Things Hunters like can that. find birds. They're just going to have to work a little harder. Absolutely. All right, RJ, thanks. Thank you. If you're planning a trip to the North Dakota State Fair this year, stop in at the Game and Fish Department's Conservation and Outdoor Skills Park. 
There's plenty to do there without spending a dime. You see, all the venues are free. There's the hunter education booth with pellet gun target shooting. The fishing pier is a popular attraction. You and the kids can catch fish and relax. There's an archery booth with target shooting there too. Trapping and fur takers booth is also included. Or if you're just looking for an answer to an outdoor question, stop at the information booth. Or if you're just looking for a shady spot to relax, park yourself under one of the many trees in the park. The Conservation and Outdoor Skills Park is open from 1 to 7 every day of the fair, July 21st through the 29th. For R.J. Gross and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.